and that you pivot the rod about the end point, okay? And then you let go of the rod, and the rod basically tips over. Let me bring a, a one meter stick here, and I'll, I'll show it to you. You know what, I've been putting both sets out there okay. and they've been using them interchangeably. But the new ones, I just always keep it in the bag, in the plastic one, and I tell them put it back in the plastic. Uh, so I don't even wrap it around, there's a place for it here on the side. I was going to put them out and then when I get them back, put them back. Then you I put it back. Storage. You could, if that's the way, you know. As long as what matters to me is they, they get back in the box, you know, nice and complete. Okay, so the kind of situation that I'm describing would look like something like this here. We have a, this one would be a uniform uh, rod, and then we'll do one where, where it's not uniform. You can pivot it about the end point here, and then you could let it go, and then it, it falls like that. So we want to do the dynamics of something like that. Now you could pivot at about another point too, at any point that you want. Of course, my hand gets in the way here. Let's see here, like this, you know, like that. Now if I, how about if I hold it at the 60 mark? It's going to be slower, right? It still goes pretty fast. How about at the 50 in the middle? There's no torque anymore, right? So if you hold at the middle, there, it shouldn't go anywhere. Well, same thing here with the two meter stick. Same principle holds. If I hold it in the middle, it should stand still. Okay, if I hold it, well, this one, if I hold it at the end, wow, this one's going to be fast here. Okay, let's see if I could do this. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So what's the physics of that? Okay, so what's going to happen is um, the when this thing pivots to about, let's say, this position, a general position, we have the, you can consider the weight as being concentrated at the center of mass. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, what I could do is I could develop a general formula for no matter where I hold it. And then we can say, what if I hold it at the end, what's going to happen and stuff like that. So let's do it that way. Let me say I hold it at an arbitrary location, right? So this is the location here. So at the uh, point where it gets here, here's the weight mg. And then let's call this one location right here, from here to here, d. The distance I hold it away from the center of mass, okay? So this is the D right here. So what's gonna happen? At that point, there's a torque on it. As a matter of fact, that's why the thing is falling, is because the weight mg is causing it to fall, it's applying a torque to it. So the magnitude of the torque is uh, R mg sine of the angle, right? the RMG, sine of the angle between the R and the MG. You see, so this is uh, theta here. And then this is the R. This is the angle between the R and the MG. So as the thing is falling, what's gonna happen is theta is gonna increase, right? 
the distance, be the angle between the R and the MG is increasing. The maximum that theta can be is 90. When the meter stick is like this, that's 90. So that will give you the most maximum torque, which also means it gives you the maximum acceleration, right? Torque equals I alpha, okay? So the maximum torque happens when the thing is uh, vertical, I mean, when the ruler is horizontal and the weight is vertical. So the angle is between them is 90. So uh, in this problem, I can ask a uh, question something like this. Let's say question A. Find the maximum, alpha maximum. And then once you find the maximum alpha, find a tangential maximum at the center of mass and a tangential maximum at the end, the end of the ruler. So from the alpha, we'll be able to calculate the a tangential. You see? So the most maximum uh, alpha will happen when the angle is 90. So sine of 90 is 1. Right? So the most maximum torque is when the angle is 90 and when the alpha is also maximum at that point. So you have RMG. And now what's the moment of inertia? Here's where we use some of the things that we learned about moment of inertia. Where I'm going to have to, this thing is rotating about that point, right? So the moment of inertia of a uniform rod about some arbitrary point we have to use the parallel axis theorem, right? Uh, the moment of inertia of the, around what axis is it rotating? Well, it's actually rotating about an axis coming out at you, right? The axis is like coming out at you, uh, so it's an IZZ, but it's shifted from here to here, you see? So the, the moment of inertia about the center of mass The I about any axis is I of the center of mass plus MD squared, uh, the parallel axis theorem. And in this case, D, the, the general D that we have here is the same as the R, right? The R of the torque. R is the distance from the pivot point to the center of mass, and D is the same thing as well. So I about any axis here, I about uh, the any axis, is equal to here, this is going to be 1 12th ml squared, the moment of inertia about the center of mass, plus md squared. Okay, so now, what happens there? Let's take that and put it into this moment of inertia. Alpha. Right? And then the M and the M and the M cancel. They're all M. And then the R is the same thing as D. So I can just put uh, DG. So DG divided by 1 12th L squared plus D squared. That's equal to alpha max. That's it. That's the answer. The maximum angular acceleration of this rod is equal to dg over 1 12th L squared plus d squared, okay? And, uh, well, let's see if it makes sense. What if d is zero? What if d equals zero? What is alpha according to this equation? Well, zero over zero, which is zero over 1 12th, so it's zero, right? So does that make sense? If D is zero, what does that mean? That means I'm actually holding it at the center of mass, right? That would be equivalent to doing this. So if D is zero, the formula should give me zero. There's no angular acceleration, you see? 